Now, whether the price of Terra Luna Classic is up or down, one thing remains true. We will be seeing proposal after proposal after proposal, and we've got another Terra Luna Classic proposal to discuss this morning. This one is from Ed, everybody's favorite developer, and it is actually very important because they've ran into a little bit of a snag, a little bit of a situation... And that is the fact that the Terra Rebels, this older group of developers, they basically got the keys to the car, man. They're the ones that are in control of the code that gets written to the Terra Luna Classic blockchain. So what in the world is this new Layer 1 development team going to do if they don't get approval from the Terra Rebels? So, Ed's got a proposal right here. Let's discuss it. And if it sounds like something you're interested in, let's get started. Let's get started. What's up, everybody? I'm Clay. I'm here to make 2023 the best year ever. If you haven't clicked that subscribe button, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Join us. Become a bro. You're here every single day, and we are growing our portfolios together. And look, if you're brand new to investing, you don't know how or where to buy stocks and crypto, you got a link in the description below for Webull. It is super simple to set up your account. Any deposit, you guys are getting at least six free stocks, up to 12 free stocks, and a $1 crypto trade is going to get you $5 in free crypto. Now, if you guys want crypto exclusive exchanges where you can buy, sell, trade, short, leverage, all of that good stuff, get your hands on some Terra Luna Classic and send it over to a DeFi wallet, you've got KuCoin and Binance. KuCoin and Binance, they offer rewards for the more active trader. So the more you trade, the more you're going to earn. But please be aware, none of these centralized exchanges are guaranteed. Not even Binance, not even KuCoin. So you might want to hold on a DeFi wallet or a, you know, a cold storage wallet. Guys, I want to jump into this proposal. It's a decent one, not terribly long, but it, it does make sense to a certain degree. Okay, so this is the proposal for no canon uh, or canonical. My gosh, can't say that right. Canonical repo for Terra Luna Classic. Terraform Labs, this is the introduction. Terraform Labs, the original developers of the blockchain, they used GitHub repository and gives you the website as the canonical repository for the Luna blockchain. After the DPEG event in May, Terra Classic repo was created. Now, it gives you the website to that one. But not actively maintained. Thus, any code changes by active developers in the ecosystem were subject to approval of a centralized authority, which Focus had shifted to a different blockchain. So Terraform Labs still had to approve all of the code. Uh, until August of 2022, the Terra Money repository was still an authoritative repository. So until then... That's when Terraform Labs gave control over to the Terra Rebels. There's a lot of Terras going on in this. Now, given that Terraform Rab Labs was no longer actively working on the classic chain, community governance passed with Proposal 4940 and elected the change to the canon or canonical repository to the Terra Rebels classic repository. This repo was then archived and switched over. It gives us another website. Due to the exploit, found an IBC code known as Dragonberry. They had to make some private changes and so on. So the motivation here is that, however, at this time, we are facing a similar situation where a group of Terra Classic Layer 1 developers, Ed and his buddies, are working on the blockchain, yet they do not have access to write the current canonical repository and are subject to the approval of a centralized entity the Terra Rebels. Given the decentralized nature of our blockchain, now it's important when it's no longer writing for Terra Rebels, now it's important to decentralize the chain a little bit. Uh, given the decentralized um, nature of our blockchain, we are proposing that there be no canonical repository for Terra Luna Classic. Thus, there is no one centralized entity or developer group that has default control over the code base Guardianship of that code runs on the blockchain is solely in the hands of the active validator set. Say what you will, okay? Until until Ed loses a little bit of control, not working with the Terra Rebels, and, and the Terra Rebels are kind of doing their own thing right now because they have control. I like the direction they're going with this, okay? Because there's two ways you can do it. Terra Luna Classic can give sole control over to Ed and, and Tobias and these guys that are working with Ed, or they can make it decentralized. I believe that Ed chose the right, I guess, the right path forward here in making it decentralized and completely up to validators and those that are actively staking to determine what code gets imposed and, and so on when it comes to the Terra Luna Classic blockchain. 
So uh, I, I completely understand the direction here, and, and given the two choices, I would agree with the one that Ed is, is proposing here. So th then it goes through these code upgrades. I'm not going to read through all these code upgrades and what it means. We're going to summarize it down. In summary, we believe that this proposal offers two major benefits to the community. First, it decentralizes the developer-validator relationship, allowing any competent developer group to con freely contribute to the blockchain. Second, it inherently requires a second level of review from the validator set and the community body. On the other hand, this does require extra effort and scrutiny on the part of developers, validators, and the community during the upgrade process. So, by voting yes, you are communicating that you believe that there should be no central canonical, canonical, I don't know why that word is so hard, canonical repository required for the Terra Luna Classic blockchain, and you support the procedure of using code commit hashes uh, as, per, as the preferred method of upgrading the blockchain. If you vote no, you are communicating that you would like the canonical repository to stay as with the Terra Rebels or the Terra, Terra Classic Rebels repository, or you would prefer that we propose a change over the layer one dream team over here. So what this boils down to is if you vote yes, what is going to happen? Any code that gets accepted by the validators is going to be the code that the Terra Luna Classic blockchain runs. What does this mean? If you are a developer, you don't have to be a part of the layer one dream team. You don't have to be a part of the Terra Rebels. You could just be a guy that has a good idea and you can get that idea out there. Makes Might make it a little bit more difficult, but your code is going to show up. It's not going to upgrade the blockchain, but it is going to show up and could easily be voted on or easily be updated by the validators. So what Ed is basically saying here is that if you are trusted in the community, of course you're going to have a little bit more leverage and a little bit more pull. <laughs> I guess he's the most trusted man in the community right now. So of course he is still going to be doing very well when it comes to the code that he suggests moving forward. But if you were a talented developer, if you're a talented programmer, and you've got great ideas and you want to get your code out there, if the validators see it and the community and the validators vote on it, your code will become the code of the Terra Luna Classic blockchain. Anybody can contribute. It is not limited to one group of developers like the Terra Rebels or like Ed's Dream Team. And this is going to allow the Terra Rebels to continue working. It's going to allow Ed to continue working. And, and it's going to make the chain a little bit more decentralized to a sense. Okay, There's going to be a lot of power with the validators. They are the ones who are going to be upgrading the chain accepting this new code and pushing it forward if the validators drop the ball there could be catastrophic i guess consequences if if the validators decide well you know what we don't like the terra rebels who the heck cares what code they write but it is better code than ed they could still vote for ed they could still upgrade the chain that way and and it kind of could create more <sighs> I don't want to say factions, but it, it could create some some rift between, I guess, prejudice and and who is viewed as being correct as opposed to who is absolutely correct. So a lot to think about in this proposal. I do think it's a good idea, though. I do think it's going to promote the decentralization a little bit and give people an opportunity. So uh, I guess it's arising from the need that, well, hey, the Terror Rebels are, are no longer going to be in charge. The Layer 1 Dream Team is. So instead of just making the Layer 1 Dream Team in charge, let's make it more decentralized. I think it's a decent proposal. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. And, of course, if that button right there is still red, make sure to click it. Subscribe to the channel. Join us. Become a bro. We are here every single day. and We are growing our portfolios together. You guys got Claybro883 everywhere. You're getting 6 to 12 free stocks on Weeble, KuCoin, and Binance, free Discord. And until the next time, hope to each and every one of you have an awesome day.